part two discussing multiple battery maintenance whenever you're using a, a single tool system one of the downsides of branded power tools is that everybody's using a proprietary battery system a lot of that has to do with the fact that the batteries are microprocessor controlled so are the chargers they communicate with each other so there's firmware in the batteries and chargers that has to be compatible even though a lot of the batteries are actually made by Panasonic Corporation uh, they'll be loaded with different firmware uh, depending on, on the battery configuration that a particular manufacturer wants in their OEM batteries so when we're doing that um, one of the things that happens is you know you gotta keep your stuff ready to go and in my line of work sometimes I'm using them sometimes I'm not sometimes I work two or three different trades in a given week uh, lately, though, it's kind of a seasonal thing. People are doing a lot of moving and TV installations and are buying furniture and doing spring cleaning. So I'm working with this stuff a lot. Um, what happens, though, is DeWalt is in the development process right now for a multi-port battery charger. I wanted to make my recommendations primarily right now. Most of this video is a shout-out to the corporation people at DeWalt and the DeWalt Insights panel. I, I don't get paid separately for this, but when you are in a contract or handyman trades and all that, and you're responsive to some of their surveys, you, you end up on a DeWalt Insights panel, and, and they kind of go bounce back and forth ideas for research and development. I don't do that with Ryobi, but I do produce the videos when I purchase Ryobi tools, and all the Ryobi tools that I have, I purchased. I I wasn't given any of those on a promotional deal by anybody. Uh, I was given kind of a sweetheart promotional deal on uh, one of the electric chainsaws, which I, I, I'm not supposed to disclose the brand, but it's one of the ones that I've done reviews on in, in, a, uh, in a series of my videos. But I, I also, you know, part of that deal is I do very honest reviews on their stuff. Uh, DeWalt, uh, I, I got a deal through Home Depot for, for this, but it was kind of the veteran special holiday type thing. And uh, I thanked them for it because I, I got this basically for 50 bucks instead of 100 bucks. I still paid for it. When I went to buy spare batteries, they wanted 50 bucks for these, and I thought, well, that's ridiculous. You know, hopefully they'll have these things available for $15, $18 at some point. I, I, fail to see how they're not making money on these at 18 or 20 bucks and I would pay 20 bucks for one of these batteries but in battery management I set my stuff up where I like to have them in one place or at least do an inventory every once in a while do a battery shakedown make sure I still own all of my batteries and uh, and I can keep them around now, sometimes I've, I've done stuff where I crudely mark them with paint especially when my my Roby batteries because I'll use those in a, you know, a paint sprayer and, and I kind of know what jobs I was using what colors on basically so it's a question of what paint they're splattered in uh, on these I, I, I gotta mark them uh, back to a couple that I think I bought back after having been stolen from me the um, the way this works though is I think the best multi battery system that DeWalt could do in the near future is going to be with this this I think it's called the tough system uh, nesting toolbox setup now these are the really heavy duty ones it's like a Zytel type of material um, these things are like a pelican box uh, but but more price competitive but they really they work a lot like a pelican box that's a rubber grommet of course we've got storage inside the lid um, they give these for technically free or included with the price on some promotional toolbox deals with power tools so this was the insert that came with this toolbox right here which I think is far better than our old hard side toolbox system where only those tools that were made to come with that toolbox go into that thing it's like the little slots nothing else is really going to go there because they block other stuff with this, you can take out the insert and kind of reconfigure the inside of the box. On that, though, I think if they were going to do a multi-port battery charger, I would like to see one similar to the six-position Ryobi battery charger, but with some added features. One, I think you could make it fit in one of these boxes. Okay. Now, this is sitting in here, and we see this lid wouldn't close 
with this little secondary lid on here, but see there's little screws here, that's removable, so that can be dealt with. Um, in theory, I could even do a homemade thing with a bunch of battery charges in here, uh, uh, wire them together to a, uh, a single little junction box inside, and, and I've got my multiple board battery charger. The only, the only issue with that is, you know, positioning on this, probably they would be positioned toward the front because you got to be able to click these up and back to get them out. But if we do that, I mean, that could work. I could actually just home make one of these, but it would only have three slots. If somebody's uh, engineering these from the get-go, well, then they could do one with more slots. But I can have it where there's three slots here and then battery storage behind that by, by just wiring all these through a single junction box and a single power cord going out the side. If you're engineering one of these things from the factory though, here's what I'd like to see is not just a single AC power cord coming out to run multiple chargers, but let's do a DC. Okay, let's do an automatic voltage sensing and, and switching inside the toolbox. It fits all inside one of these nesting boxes so it works that whole tough tote system that, they, that you guys are selling anyway. But we've got a DC power cord we can go out and plug in. Now the DC power cord default end is the vehicle 12 volt cigar lighter. But you could also have it where it unplugs on the inside, there's adapters so it could use like other types of heavier duty plugs if somebody wanted to hardwire a vehicle to take a little bit more proprietary heavy duty plug like I do with the solar stuff. And then that would make the, the powering toolbox off grid capable. Okay, so that's that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see both AC and DC in the charging tower, whether you do the power tower or the multipode charger or whatever you want to name it. I want to see it do both AC and DC, okay? The other thing we want to see is make it into the format of this toolbox system. Another thing is the ports on these, I think you could do like you're doing with that cordless vacuum cleaner that senses or can run on either the 18 volt batteries or the 20 volt batteries. I, I believe one of the new job site radios that uh, runs on the batteries can run on either the 18 or the 20 volt. I'm not sure if the one which also runs on the batteries or also charges the batteries can run on the 18 or 20 volt. But I'd really like to see a lot of this stuff made compatible to where it can work with these modular toolboxes in some manner that makes it so that when I snap a bunch of these toolboxes together on either the little hand truck or cart or something, it all goes one place at one time. The other thing that I think makes us better than the stuff that's bag oriented is that I work in a lot of places where it's kind of a security location and they, they need to inspect boxes and bags going in and out. And when we have stuff in toolbox, tool bags, uh, sometimes it's sharp, okay? There's, there's other tools in there that are sharp. And it gets a little awkward because, uh, you know, we got the security girl up there. She's, she's kind of, she has to open a bag. She has to look. That's store policy. It's company policy and all that. And there's sharp stuff in there, you know. And, but if a guy is in there with boxes, uh, she can open the drawers or look in the clear top of the boxes, and that counts as the, as the inspection. So we, I personally prefer the boxes. The thing about bags is that when guys are going to work and they're keeping them behind the seat of the truck, it's, it's, sometimes the, it's, it's easier to wrestle those bags in and out of a truck, like behind the seat of their truck or something, than it is to deal with a whole toolbox cart, okay? Because not everybody has a four-door, three-door pickup trucks that you can open up the back. Now, I, I roll on bigger job sites and that kind of thing. I go with a van. Uh, or, or a hatchback like SUV type thing so it's not really a problem for me to have things that are box oriented as opposed to bag oriented. The other thing is I really like this whole waterproof type thing water resistant because I'm in Oregon and I don't want this stuff getting wet and everything else I'm seeing like on the power tower and a multi-port charger or the Ryobi one is those things can't get water on them. If they get water on them they're ruined. With this, if we figure out some sort of a system where the cord just gets, you know, you drill a hole and put the cord out the side, well, we can have it closed and it's still managing all the batteries, okay? That's, and it's, it's airtight, so it's good for that. 
we can close it and have it plugged in and topping off all the batteries uh, while we're waiting for the next job call. I, I think that's the direction you want to go with this type of stuff.